Yes. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our little chat room. I wanted to introduce two people, Nick and James, to this little chat room. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. Uh, no problem. You guys mind just introducing yourselves and where you're based and what you what you what you do and stuff like that. Age before beauty, Jay. You go. All right. Hi, I'm I'm James Hutchison. I'm co-founder of PH7 Life and Balance. Uh, we're based up in Highgate. Um, we're primarily a personal training um, setup. We've myself and Nick have been based up in Highgate for many years. Established ourselves as um, as trainers of. Uh, people who don't like to train um, primarily um, that's I'd say is one of our specialities um, but yeah we we take more of a holistic approach to to training um, you know we obviously we're into like strength and conditioning but most of our clients are you know the general population a lot of rehab a lot of um, mobility issues things like that so that's really our game really it's just uh, it's taking people who don't like to train and making them love it Nice man, nice. When you say when you say co-founder, what you're basically saying, James, is you're the main man. Is that what you're saying? I'm giving Nick a little credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on in, Nick. Come on in. <laughs> it's in the logo. It's, it's the little P before the big H. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the little Palmer Big Hutch. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Nick. I'm a uh, well, yeah. Again, been in the game a fair bit. Virtually, obviously, we used to work together at Fitness First a long, long time ago now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, when I kind of initially wanted to do the sort of athletic route and then realized obviously that work options were quite limited. So went to do sports therapy at university at Kent, which I loved and then kind of found my niche really coming off the back of that as wanting to be on the gym floor still, but obviously looking at into integrating all the rehab stuff that I learned um, and found actually that it was obviously a really good, good link there in terms of correcting injuries and issues by corrective exercise um and sort of built built my business off the back of that really um so what why why high gate because dad did you say that you were from st Norman's anyway were yeah you? so I, I i kind of found my way to high gate via um hagley woods actually um I, I was working a gym over there um i worked with someone who started started a gym in high gate i've i found my way over there never left really um it's just it's a nice place to work it's full of places my, my little ones just come back um it's it's full of lovely people to work with um there's lots of demand for our sort of services hello it's just okay <laughs> uh, lots of demand for our services and it really gave us gave me an opportunity to kind of really like build a career um i kind of felt that you know initially you always think that personal training is a young man's game but I've, I've found I've, I've been able to build a, an actual career and a sustainable lifestyle out of it. Um, and being an area like Highgate has allowed me to do that properly. What's the, what's the, sort, of, yeah, what's the sort of demographic of the of your oh, clients? Oh, The clients around there, I'd probably say we, the most yeah. people we would we attract are probably 45 upwards. Okay. Um, oh. You know, they start off, you know, people who haven't maybe exercised for many, many years um maybe go through injuries that sort of stuff and then just find their way back into back into the gym um and we we probably take it all the way i mean we do have some teenagers on the books but we we take it all the way up to people in the head it's kind of three three main categories isn't it really it's we've got the you've got the hard working professionals that typically are sort of in early doors or in late later in the evenings then you've got the kind of the Highgate housewives, we call them. So the, the sort of middle of the day as they do the, the school run and then, you know, train. And then obviously a lot of Highgate is, it's a kind of a, a popular almost retirement place, isn't it, Jay? So yeah, yeah. we've got that, the kind of the three main groups that we're getting. Um, so, how, so how do they kind of, is it just, I know your facility, I know you've just moved and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But no, your, your first facility was on the high street, is that right? So is that how you kind of built up your clientele? Is that how you kind of built up your reputation or? Kind of, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, the, the main source of, of rep is, is always word of mouth. I mean, like, we were lucky enough to work uh, initially in facilities that were already running. Um, and that helped us build a client base to start with and build a reputation. And then naturally, as you, you progress in your career, opportunities come up to maybe, you know, get your own space. Um, you know, we, we were able to do that, you know, comfortably, really. I mean, I like, 10 years into my career, I went back to university. So I actually went from being full-time training, like 
stripped it back, went and did a psychology degree. I wanted to take my career in a slightly different way, focus on communication, focus on behavior, mindset, that sort of thing. So I actually then went part-time training whilst I studied for three years. Uh, but I was able to kind of work house to house in that stage of my career. Um, and then once I came out of uni, you know, find that confidence to kind of rebuild my, my, my client base back up. And, you know, I'm, we'll see, so I'm nine years out of, out of uni now. And yeah, here I, here I am. So it's cool, man. Retention, I mean, retention's a big thing for us as well, Joe, isn't massive, it? Yeah, really, massive, we're yeah. quite lucky that when, when we opened the doors of the other gym, the older space, we're pretty much running at capacity individually. You know, we talk yeah. onto it later, but that whole balance of doing, you know, Jay and I both hate turning away work. Yeah. Um, but initially the, the plan for the first space was just going to kind of be like a stepping stone to hopefully something bigger and better or just where we were just going to consolidate what we had. Um, and then, yeah, it's just kind of said, like Jay said, word of mouth. It's, it's just kind of gone up from there, isn't it really? Yeah. That's it. Of the clients we train now, we've been training for, well over 10 years some of them and yeah, well, longer yeah. for you Joe, so I think that's massively important you know again i've got clients that have been with me since day dot and uh yeah. you know they follow me all over the place and you know you thank them them people for it and you uh testament yeah. to you mate uh, yeah well i, I think you. what you're doing and you got you got you know you, the other the other thing we we're just going to talk about is obviously you moved to a new site so is this new site was kind of trying to move with you know because at the moment the big thing at the moment is group training i know it's kind of changed now for the whole sort of um you know what we've just had with covid but you know that was sort of you know in my head that's where most of the industry was sort of going into for yeah. us trainers instead of doing that face-to-face one-to-one you had maybe a four-to-one or four-to-two or whatever yeah i mean it was it was part of our thoughts i mean we we we're very lucky in a sense that the area we work on is the work in this there's still a huge demand for one-on-one training um and we 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 got to the point where we had you know five coaches who you know really could we just couldn't take on any more work so we we had to grow um but there's there's you know of course, we, we we were looking at the small group model as something to add on to our business as a as like a, as another way of going. Um, but we were hoping, we, ideally, we wanted a hybrid model where we were doing part one on one, part group. Now we've got some online work as well. So you know, it's uh, if anything I mean, COVID's added us added to us. How do you balance that? Yeah, I'm just saying, obviously, seeing your little kitty James, but like, how yeah. do you balance that? You know, I've, I've got nearly a two year old, and it's the same thing. It's balancing. Yeah, being at work from six to whenever, and then the sort of not being there or seeing the kid, your kid as much, and you know. So how how do you how do you manage that? Do you, do you um, on more trainers? Do you take on more therapists? I think I think, I think at the moment, I, you know, the, obviously go going back into it now. We're myself and Nick are very aware that um, we need to free our time up to work more on the business, uh, but also. You know, there's been things going on in my life which showed me that I need to spend more time at home. I've I've created my shift pattern so I can do things like nursery drop-offs and pickups and stuff like that, and spend more time with with a boy. Um, you know, it's not it's not because I've had to; it's because I I want to as well. You know, so um, but we we I feel we're lucky enough to be in a sort of industry where we can we can kind of manipulate those shifts, but. But Nick's, um, you know, he's newly married and he's well aware that, you know, at some stage he he might have what we've got going on there. So he's, he's looking at it as well, thinking, you know, we, we need to think that way, you know. And it's been a little bit of a, a breathing space, to be fair, you know, it's allowed me to yeah. reflect on um, my priorities and what's important to me. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I don't have an expense of a, an external lease or building that yeah. I've got to, you know, think, Jesus, I've got to pay the bills. However, you know, I do believe that you have to start, you start having to free more time up, especially having a little one. It's, yeah. You can't get that time back. And that's really, yeah. really important. So my my mind, my sh- shift of how I'm working has definitely changed. Yeah. Uh, now I just want to come back to your whole brand. I, I love the brand. I think it's, I think it's wicked. You know, uh, the whole sort of pH seven, the balance, the sort of, you know, you already know that before you've even come in and stepped into your facility. So just talk to me about the seven. Is it is it just about balance or is there, I don't know, there's like seven little, little points that you've got. It started with a name, actually. So we had we had quite a lot of thought, didn't we, Joe, into yeah. the name. 
And then obviously my surname's Palmer, his is Hutchison. So we were like, let's have a play with the PH. Yeah. And then we were like, PH7, you know, on the litmus, it's, it's, it's neutral. It's that, that, you know, not acidic, not alkaline. It's that balance. And then we just kind of sat down and we were like, right, what are, what are the core sort of foundations oh, or core that, yeah. values yeah. that we really feel are important? <laughs> for... So again... You thought, Jesus, we've got to come up with seven. <laughs> I, I mean, we, 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 we were going... Four and we were really in trouble. Yeah, we were struggling, really. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, like, to be honest, I mean... Yeah, the, the, books out. The, the, main, the main thing is, is that our approach to health, approach to fitness, our health, approach to nutrition, all that is, it's about, it's not all or nothing. It's not, you know, we, we're not going to come in, you know, people know instantly they're going to come into us they're not just going to be run through the mill for any reasons just because they want to work hard, you know? So we, we like looking at... They say, were like, getting as well, Jay, weren't they? A lot of... Yeah. We'll come back yeah. to that. Yeah, cool. You no, know, that's right. But, we, you know, we want we want people to come in. They want, we want them to take a balanced approach to their fit, fitness, you know? We're, we're getting a lot of people who have very high-stress, high-pressure lives, and we're trying to get them to take a step back from that and say, you know, evaluate your health, evaluate your nutrition. You know, it's not just about coming in and just starving yourself for six weeks to kind of lose a bit of weight. How can you get a sustainable, balanced um, approach to your nutrition across many, many years? Um, you know, that, that's kind of how, that's how we work. And you the core values we put in place all, all kind of, you know, they build into that. Really. All together, yeah. I mean, all, yeah. all of that stuff is exactly the same as our talk. It's about control mm -hmm. of that autonomic nervous system being in that yeah. uh, parasympathetic state. You know, trying to explain that to customers is quite difficult. And if you have got people that are at a high powered level, mm. entrepreneurs, you know, et cetera, made their money, they like to see data. Is there anything that you guys use to show them that? Is there any... You know, uh, I had a great conversation with a friend of mine in Hong Kong and they use a thing called an Omega wave. You ever heard of that? No, no. Have, have a little Google of it. It's quite, mm. quite a cool way. They, it's a device that basically you have to put yourself in a rest state for four minutes and it tells you where your autonomic nervous system is and it sort of characterizes where yeah. the training should do. Should, should I be doing more breathing, recovery? You know, should I be doing high intensity? Should I be doing my one RM? Should I be doing... So it's a yeah. quite a cool bit of data for... I think it's the sort of bell and whistle that sort of I'm definitely going to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love love the fact that that level of data gives them customers. Ah, uh, so as soon as they come in, they tap themselves up to the device. The device tells them what sort of training. Not, you know, you're obviously telling them that you know you're in a little bit of a stress state. We use uh, at the moment uh, like heart rate belts, so I can yeah. see when a customer walks up the stairs that they're at like 80 percent you think jesus you've only walked from the car park it's not like you're massively overweight or etc yeah, yeah 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 morning being well you know i had to drop the kids off and then i had to take the dog for a walk and then you know da, 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 and i've had three cups of coffee you know they're, they're stressed they're, they're oh, yeah. you know so it's it's a cool bit of kit that you might want to have a little look at but i was just wondering yeah, yeah. That's interesting, you know, yeah. anything you guys use or do you use uh you know their heart rate or <laughs> well, well, I, I mean primarily for me i like i just like our coaches to listen Mm -hmm. You know, like ask ask a few questions. You can you can find out how someone is, you know, pretty quickly. You know, I know, I know that you can find out, but it's proven to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they come in, mate. I've, you know, I've come in because I want to get a six pack. When we doing our app work, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get you. It doesn't kind of app like that. I mean, is there anything that you kind of, you know, do you use a perceived exertion? I know we use it, but is yeah, there... our, our RPE scales definitely. Um, it's definitely something we look at in terms of monitoring like um, intensity levels. Heart rate, where, like I said, we, we kind of pick and choose the clients to work with. So, again, like, we obviously, we've worked with a few athletes over the time. So, yeah, certainly we're looking at heart rate protocols for them um, and then RPEs. And, yeah, just, again, it's like a lot a lot of the clients that, like we said, are, are sort of core, you know, they they find gyms intimidating environments or they're people that are used to going to some of these, I'm not going to name names, but some of these, you know, facilities in London where it is very much it just – seven days a week will put you through the mill, you know, and then, so I think people are quite often with us, it's the opposite. They're quite happy to hear our, our sort of our thoughts and how we would like them to do things. Yeah. Um, and also, it sounds like the majority of your clientele like that individual, uh, yeah. you know, tailoring every single time they come in, you know, I, I, and, and there's a, there's a market for it. There's a big market for it, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good the way that you're approaching that sort of uh, clientele. It's definitely the, the clients that are my bread and butter, you know. It's the, yeah, it's the... I'm, I'm a big believer in that one of the most important things you can do is build a coaching alliance so that, you know, you, you, you create an environment that someone can come in and they can be happy to talk to you. They can be honest with you, you can open up. They're, they're not intimidated. They understand whatever they come in with that they're going to get support. You know, I kind of feel... The motivation behind your degree, Jay, right? Yeah, I mean, like we, we nurture people into better behaviours, you know. Like, you know, we, we get a lot of very successful people who, you know, they, they're used to doing things a very certain driven way and just trying to convince them to take a step back, show a bit of compassion towards themselves, just helps them kind of just just get on, you know. We, we do put for people through the mill when when they need to, you know, don't, don't, don't get us wrong. We don't come in and just give people a cuddle, but you know, they, you, know <laughs> sometimes, you might do. Sometimes um, the cuddle is needed. Sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, I mean, no, no, Jay, totally. Yeah, Jay, no, you're right. Uh, cognitive behavioral sort of stuff, you know, I've, I've just taken on a uh, young girl, Megan, who's going to come on my chat room next week. And yeah. About uh yeah mental health is a is a big issue and it's definitely come up on a lot of my chats with with guys you know especially you know us guys don't really talk about our emotions very much you know and definitely having that uh knowledge and background as you you would been doing at university i mean you're yeah. using them skills but do you do you have any sort of um you know tricks or tips that you can you know, for myself yeah. i mean i i like to um i like mindfulness I like you know, not even the sense of just kind of putting an app on, but just actually thinking about, you know, what you're doing on a day to day basis, taking time for 10 minutes here and there, having a nap sometimes when you need it, that sort of thing. Um, I've, I've, I've taken courses in CBT, things like that. So you can understand. So you get to, you learn how to analyze behavior in a bit, bit better of a way. In like, the assessment, Jay, as well, isn't it? So you um, so I'm just going to say, Adam, it's in our assessments. We sort yeah, of yeah, it's in it's our assessments. Assessment. We, we, well, we talk about that. You're applying um, that to your customers. You're, you, are you giving that information to educate them on, you know, how they plan their day out, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Is that sort of... Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, when when someone is tr when is someone's struggling to maybe take on a new behaviour, that's when I'll, I'll bring these things into play. But a lot of it is just, um, for me, it's just asking the right questions and just... Not not giving too much, not giving too much away. I like people. I want to lead people to their own answers. You know, I find people generally comply better if they come up with the idea themselves, and you're just there to facilitate. You know, the, the pathway. Coach you out of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, exactly, exactly. Um, and like you know, it. for myself personally, I've 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 made sure I've I've gone and seen people. You know, I've 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 been through tough times like everyone, and I go I go and speak to professionals. You know, I've I. I taken this year alone i did about eight to ten hours with a nlp therapist who was specialized in self-compassion and it's really opened up my eyes and and how i can i can improve my own mindset and my own way of thinking and i use that with my clients as well you know i think, I think nick we were talking the other day about investment and we were just saying that you know i think there's a lot of trainers out there that kind of have maybe got bored of the industry or just doing the same run in the mill sort of things and you know my belief is definitely you've got to continuously educate yourself but james oh, you're saying that you've gone nick i know you it's your own fault right like there's we don't know everything access to information yeah. now is, is so good like there's no excuses really like it's so just talk about your team. Is there other people on your team apart from you two that um, I know you just taking a go, does she do Pilates and stuff or is it yoga or something that you've done? Daisy, Daisy's, yeah. I mean, she she's, was down at W10. Um, so she's, she's a really good strength and conditioning coach, personal trainer. Um, but her passion is, is Pilates as well. So again, she's she's been kind of ideal for our, our demographic because it's, it's a market that Jay and I obviously knew was would be popular, but neither of us have got any Pilates qualifications it wasn't yeah. something we could offer um and then so daisy's great then we've got we've got two other guys we've got a guy called james lock here who's same background as me he did sports therapy up at middlesex um and then again so just a very very good coach but extremely knowledgeable with his with his anatomy and like injury rehab so um we've bought we've just sort of set up a relationship with a, 
another physio as well called Andre Lelou, which is quite exciting. So the pair of us as therapists can kind of work with him, which we're looking forward to. That's quite a new thing. I think that's I think that's a great thing to attach other therapists. You know, again, I've done a lot of these chat rooms over COVID, and you know, a lot of therapists, chiropractors, osteopaths, sports masseuses. I think you need to have a lot of strings, a lot of people yeah. that are part of your group or part of your team that you respect. They yeah. understand you. They understand your principles. They understand. You know, the client feels, oh my God, it's like you know, James or Nick are sending me to you. I know that you're the right person for me. That's and that's it. Yeah, that's it really important important. that's that's the thing is it's like it's never be afraid to refer like jay and i know if there's a better person for the job like we're going to encourage that or even if there's a better per like we try and pair clients with the most appropriate trainer like we've also we've got another guy called bull who's very he's very movement based his approach is very different to your typical sort of personal training um, but he's it, brilliant, isn't he, Jay? Like what he does. Yeah, he's, he's, he's certainly um, passionate, and he, he loves. He's, he's very good at it. He's a great example of someone who's dedicated them to their their kind of art almost. Because I would say um, a lot of trainers have a science. I mean, he has an art to what he does. It's very very movement based, and you know, it's, you can cool. see his improvement over the years. I mean, so it's very good. Yeah. Um, we, we we've added in um, like uh, an element of nutrition coaching. I mean, to to our business, we you know, nutrition is one of our big taglines, and We've tried to take it away from just the, the general prescription of, of weight loss diets. And we're, we're trying to kind of find a way of coaching habits. Um, I kind of feel maybe group nutrition coaching might be the way to kind of do this more successfully. Yeah. Um, you know, there's that kind of collective support within a group environment. Um, and I do feel kind of habit based stuff. Um, it doesn't need so much one-on-one time with someone, you know, because you're not telling someone what to eat. You're telling them how to approach their lifestyle. So um, kind of doing a modern day Weight Watchers, but not that, if that kind of makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I did my education through precision nutrition. But I think it's important that, you know, I've done yeah. a precision nutrition course and I think it's sound yeah. and I think the point of, um, you know, we, we, we like support. Yeah. Especially yeah. We, like oh, that. Yeah. we like to know that we're achieving yeah, and I think with that sort of knowledge that you're educating a group of people with that yeah, yeah, yeah. each other, I think, you know, with, with the use of what we were saying with social media, yeah, yeah. closed group stuff, the whole sort of constantly WhatsApping each other, posting, yeah. you know, their progress, you know, all that sort of stuff. I think that is a really, really positive and it'd be a fantastic program. Yeah, very powerful as well. Do you, you, know, you do fun. that, much? Is that something you do? But yeah, we we do do it with, um, well, I do it with my individual customers, but um, mm. I think that the principles that what I'm looking at is really the control of that autonomic nervous system. And the, I, I describe it like your mobile phone that only had 10% battery life. And what would yeah. you, would you then go on a diet? Would you dehydrate yourself? Would you go out and do a hit session? Or would you think I need to charge myself and it's educating the customer on how to charge themselves. So for us, it's nutrition is probably in my eyes would be the least important thing that they need to get, but it's something tangible that they can control hydration yeah. Sleep is the massive thing that I can educate my clients with. And then the oxygen consumption, their ability to breathe and be able to deal with, going back to the psychology of, you know, managing their breathing rate. If you've become anxious, you know, just breathe, just breathe, but teaching them how to actually breathe properly. And that yes. then goes on to their level of fitness. I mean, we're going to come on, if I don't talk about the boxing, Jay, uh, uh, Nick, they'll, 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 most of my members won't like that, but, you know, the ability of <laughs> professionals, how their ability to breathe and recover and stay their state of mind, that all comes down to breath. It all comes down mm. to that level of control. Yeah. So if they've cut themselves for weight or they've, you know, dehydrated themselves too much, you know, I'm going into the golfing market and that whole sort of nutrition and hydration uh, around a golf course for four hours. A lot of my customers don't eat or drink very well. So oh. you know, supplying them with that level of nutrition and understanding, I think that's my group nutritional side of stuff that's what i'm gonna start pursuing online is is the golfing market and pursue a 12-week plan for that i'm not teaching them how to swing a golf club i'm teaching them how to <laughs> how to educate themselves on the rounds i want to start doing blood work i want to start doing you know what happens on hole two what happens before you start your round what happens on the you know 16th or 17th hole when does your blood sugar start to drop all them types of things coming back to my sports science background, coming back to that sort of understanding, again, I'm not teaching you how to play golf. It will fundamentally change and your scratch will start, you know, your handicap will start to get in better and better just because 
you're taking a two litre bottle of water around with you and not going around nine holes and then pick up a Mars bar and a Lucas aid. It's, yeah. it's not rocket science, you know, but it's coming I back. To made me. that mistake many a time, mate. So yeah. true. So let, let's let's just talk about the 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 boxing side of it, um, you know, because obviously was that a couple of years ago? I saw you guys in Vegas. Was that where it was? Yeah, we we well we got first camp. So we got involved post Porky Medina fight. Um, so actually, the first fight was the unification bout in New York. So we had a uh, just tell the viewers who who, who it is and uh, James DeGale. So. So James came to us. It's, it's, obviously, it was a great, exciting project. But J- James obviously came to us already a gold medalist, already a you know a world title oh, holder, yeah. a very established athlete. But what he kind of was, was realizing is that obviously boxing as a sport, he's you know he's kind of stayed a little bit in the dark ages, and he was kind of beginning to realize that other fighters were focusing on other areas that he wasn't. So specifically, strength and conditioning nutrition nutrition sorry he was very much doing things the old school way so a lot of a lot of training which we were kind of you know had to encourage the fact it was a bit detrimental to what he was doing like a rocky montage for like three months wasn't it his, uh, yeah fasting yeah. like <laughs> like, de- cro- like dehydrating to make the scales all the all the kind of things you just kind of oh God, okay so, so you gave him a good recovery protocol well, yeah, I mean, with the first challenge, it was quite interesting because you've got, you got him who's obviously come in having achieved everything the sport's got to offer. You've got his coach who, in his own right, fought for a world title. And then Jay and I are kind of sitting there about to go, well, you're kind of doing a lot of things wrong, guys. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I've never been in a ring in my life. Um, so it was, it, was just, it was just, yeah, it's just a good project. But it's certainly a lot of our values he needed. So, it, yeah, it was a matter of educating them about the training you know, certainly beginning to do less, training the right energy systems, being more sport specific, constantly plagued with injuries for his whole career because of bad training, no no recovery, like over training, yeah, over training, over training massively. Um, and then obviously how you know terrible diet. I mean, he'd, he'd get in and, and win a world title fight off of a cheesecake factory and three days starving beforehand, you know? So you guys were like, look, this is, this is going to be easy because (laughs) you're at that level, you're at this level and all we're going to do is just change a few habits. And uh, I know I'm going to make an improvement. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, it was, it was, it was good fun. And it was, I remember, I remember the first fight we were in Miami. So we did a really good camp in Miami and he was, he was pretty much close to fighting weight about, two or three days before we go to New York. And he's sort of already like, right, I need to stop eating now. And, you know, just sort of been like, no, James, definitely not. Like, we're going to eat. You're going to continue to eat. And it was all new, like a whole new process of actually like being able to box. So we'd actually get through that sort of, was you sort of his nutritionist, his sort of, you know. Strength. Yeah, like like Jay and I, we kind of, we were very conscientious that if we push too much, it might, he might just go, do you know what? Like, I can't be bothered. Like, I've done everything by myself to this point. Like this is too much. And he, Jay's, Jay, you know, he'll openly admit he's very much like that. Like he's, he's one of the most loyal guys you'll ever meet, but he likes the way he does things. Yeah. So we were sort of having to, you know, to get involved and do what we can, but certainly we were looking at things that they weren't looking at at all. So obviously in that circumstance, you know, I was bang on his food for everything, you know, calculating every meal, working it all out, um, fluid intake, hydration levels, weight, from not just like 48 hours before the scales are around the corner. It was, you know, a structured sort of tailored weight loss, you know. And the other thing, mate, as well as, as you know, when you, you commit to some good strength and conditioning work, you put on muscle mass. So the, I was absolutely shitting myself on the, even though I knew his weight was good, I'm there thinking if, if he gets on these scales heavy because he's got a bit more muscle mass than ever before, then I'm the idiot here. So, but was... you got to give yourself both credit that you know what you're doing is exactly what you're saying is that you're not boxers. You're not teaching them how to box. You're teaching them the whole other seven principles about well, yeah, of, of balance. And I think that is that is a major thing. And what you touched on earlier with a, with a client like that, data, because in someone like that, you need like that. That's an example yeah. of where you do want to. You do need it, yeah. Yeah. You, need to, you need to know exactly where you are pretty much every session. You do need to have that confidence to kick him out the door and, or, you know, but well, you're jumping on the couch today, mate, because you're, you know, you're absolutely shattered. You're, you're showing all the wrong signs. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt it as, um, you know, I was loosely involved. We, we kind of felt that with Nick's background, um, 
in the sports therapy and, and a, like a real kind of like interest in kind of working with athletes. He was certainly the lead on this kind of project. But obviously, we've kind of all dipped in I here and there. About my boxing history as well. Uh, yeah, no, that's it. But we, um, but I kind of felt it was really nice for us to see that our principles can work with athletes as well, but just by adding that level of precision into it. Whereas mm-hmm. with you know a general population client, it's not always so necessary to be so precise. Uh, but when you are working with a, an athlete and a pro athlete where those pounds on the scales are very much kind of um, absolute target goals at a certain time, you, lose your belt. you know, you, you, we probably had to do some things that maybe we wouldn't normally do with clients. But it was, uh, I, I think it was overall, it was, it was good, it was a good experience, wasn't it? What, you, what you're doing is you're reading that personality of that particular individual, regardless of yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. you will have certain clients that, are very detailed orientated you know if they ask you where the shop is and you guys just around the corner they'll be like what you know and then they want to know right you need to walk 200 yards down the road and then you need to turn left and then yeah, yeah. That traffic lights they need to know the actual detail otherwise they won't understand it and you have that in day-to-day clientele mm. you know? so you understand how to do you know your burpee what yeah. so you put your hands down they go in front of your feet then the other clients go burpee and you go yep yeah, cool done yeah, 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 no, totally, yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what that's what makes you a good trainer or a good coach is that you're every single customer, and that's what you know you guys have done. Yeah, yeah. Right, and to it. Comes through the door. They need to know that they're going to be treated as an individual and not as a group. Yeah. Yeah. But what we we were talking about Nick was that yeah group group training or I think you've touched on a fantastic point, James, about n- group nutrition. I think that is a that's a really good idea. I think that you should definitely, you know, one, you don't need a massive facility. I know we can talk about your new facility in a second, but, you know, just having a, a, a weekly meeting, you know. Something I can do from my chair, you know. That's a uh, chair. That is a beautiful chair, by the way. I love it. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. yeah it's, my, it's my ranting chair. <laughs> chair, Nick. I mean, I don't know what I'm sitting on. It's like a. So, some of super ergonomic thing from uh, Ash's, uh, the wife's work, mate. <laughs> <laughs> look, guys, look, we're just coming up to the end of our time. Um, yes. I, I do appreciate appreciate you both coming on and, and chat with me today. There's one question I ask every um, guest that comes on. If there is a certain book or what you're reading or who you're following on social media, just something that, you know, my, my viewers and your viewers can go, ah, yeah, I might have a little look at that. So, Nick, what about you? Books. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to go for. I, I mean, books, when, podcast could be anything. Well, I'm going to roll back the years because uh, I might have still in this from you, Joe, but I've, I've gone back to a bit of Stuart McGill stuff for the for back health. Just some uh, scientific back I've read during lockdown. And I just think any any coach, the, the stuff in that book is just so relevant to any level of training, whether it's a fairly complex like back issue or just every day just kind of you know walking through the door little little niggles and all these sort of stuff i just think the contents of that book it's just really really good like real basic really easy to digest and just apply to clients right you know and just help a lot of coaches out there that you know we still see it all the time but certain ad drills that just shouldn't necessarily be being done anymore yeah, uh, yeah. help yeah. kind of educate as to why and you know, and understand that relationship between the back and the hips. And I could go on for hours, but that'll be my, my <laughs> shout out for this one. That could be another chat on it. It's an old book. So I'm going back. <laughs> a lot of people are going to be saying, oh, I read that 12 years ago, mate. Get rid of times. But yeah, I mean, the same for me, really. I mean, like one of the, I think, a staple for any coach who wants to go towards a more holistic route. I, I don't think you can go far wrong with starting off with um, Eat, Move and Be Healthy by Paul Check. Really. Check. Good you know, I just, I just, I think that should be like a, a staple one for. Um, what's, what's the other back one we use, Nick, as well? Um, oh, the, you're talking about a pain-free program. Pain-free, pain-free program. Yeah, that one. I think that's a really good book as well. Yeah. Um, but in, ter- in terms of other, of other reading, I mean, I, I think all coaches should, should take time to step away from just reading about nutrition and anatomy and actually start reading about communication we start reading about um about life i mean like books like sapiens things like that i mean i just i think it's a fantastic understanding of of humankind and you know how we you know how we think like maybe something like 
Think Fast, Think Slow by Daniel Kahneman. It's understanding heuristics, under, understanding how people make decisions, you know, things like that. I just I just think these are really important yeah. books to kind of get to grips with how, how well, learn about the human condition if you're going to work with the, people. The communication one's great, Joe. I think that's it. I think it's, you, you know, you can be the most knowledgeable coach in the world, but if your delivery isn't right or your communication isn't, you know, easily... Like, like you, said, you know you either give someone too much detail or you give to someone too little detail yeah, right. yeah, it's yeah. understanding when and when not to give that information yeah 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 situations with your athletes and you uh, under customers yeah, if they're coming through the door and they're not ready for that type of information yet and that's what i'm guessing or that's how i kind of approach it that this vessel right here it needs to be in a healthy state to make these changes <clears throat> and changes are good changes is about growth yeah, so I'm going through a change at the moment. That sounds really weird, but I'm going through the change. <laughs> career. Um, and, you know, it, it, I feel nervous. I feel apprehensive. I feel, you know, I'm coming out of my identity and not being within a gym environment. However, I know that it's kind of not the position that I currently want to be in. So it's, it's like growth. If I want a bigger chest, I'm going to have to do bigger weights or I'm going to have to do a different kind of chest routine. And it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be painful. It's going to, you know, I'm going to have to keep going with it for four to six weeks. It's the same thing. You know, it's just that mental change and it's going to feel uncomfortable and you're not going to want to do it. And you're going to want to go back to the same old routine that you did 20 years ago, uh, but there's no change. So yeah, mate, it's a great but, point. Yeah, good, on, good on you, mate, for talking about it and setting this up. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. I appreciate you. As I said, I appreciate it. you guys and everyone that's been on the chat room. I, I've really enjoyed it. And it's definitely something that I will maybe pursuing in the future, these little chat room interviews. I love them. But look, guys, just tell the viewers uh, where you're at. I know you've got a new facility, where you're at, where people can find you, uh, that sort of thing. So, we're, yeah, we've just, we just we opened on the 25th. So we are Baker's Lane. So basically the bottom of, of Highgate North Hill. So as you're going down the main A1. Um, but yeah, just basically Highgate Village, a little walk from the tube station. Um, we're yeah. on uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, it's, P it's just PH Seven, so and Life in Balance. So yeah, I mean, if you want to follow us, we're we're on there as well. We we post about every six weeks. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, you can post this, mate. You can post this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Look, I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for being on, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Yeah. Nice yeah, one, Chris. Cheers, mate. Take care. You,